Hey guys, I'm finally back with another video and today I want to show you my new electric bicycle. Maybe you guys remember that I've been building several electric vehicles together with my buddy in the past and I still love doing this. So this is a new concept. It works with a belt drive as you can see here and the belt is going around this mount which is made completely out of ABS plastic from a 3D printer. So that is the big new part. This is actually putting a 3D printer into proper use as well as having this gigantic um, ring here which is uh, like attached to the sprockets of the rear wheel. It is basically impossible to make this ring with anything else than a 3D printer because you have to be both precise in order so that the teeth properly match the belt and obviously you cannot buy such a big gear uh, they are available in smaller sizes out of metal and uh, metal would also be extremely uh, heavy at this size and uh, well machining this out of aluminium I don't know how expensive this would be and I definitely cannot make this at home and I wanted to now show you a bit more of this bike in detail so let's take a closer look so first of all this is like the fifth iteration of the whole thing and I finally wanted to show it to you because it's finally working really well. And this iteration has the most plastic and the least metal in it, which is kind of fascinating. But it turns out that uh, using ABS plastic for uh, parts that actually have to hold up is a quite good idea. Uh, first of all, as you can see, this part here is printed in this orientation. So it was like in, this is the plane where it was printed on, while the bottom part was printed in this orientation. Now. Um, uh, 3D printed parts are stronger within the orientation than uh, they are printed on than perpendicular to it because uh, the lines separate easily. Now if you think about it, and when this motor turns it pulls on this upper uh, belt and it pulls the whole construction in this uh, direction and the pull on this is about 50 kg if you go full throttle which is quite a lot so in other words this construction has to hold these 50 kg plus about 5 newton meter of torque but the torque itself it doesn't matter that much because it's uh, not much it's just so much pull because the sprocket is very small um, now the bottom part here unfortunately is printed in this orientation because it wouldn't be possible to print it properly otherwise so it had to be quite thick but it works very well still now um, why did I need to uh, make this whole thing so uh, thick? Uh, the motor itself does have um, bearings, but they are very, very small. Since this is an uh, outrunner and it's a uh, radio motor, it's actually usually um, originally designed for radio controlled aircraft. And the bearings of those motors are designed to only handle loads uh, along the axis not radially outwards, which means that you have to support uh, the motor with additional bearings, otherwise it will first of all wear out very quickly, secondly be very loud and also have a very uh, low efficiency because it's actually uh, then scraping against the, uh, the bell inside, which is not good. And I had to figure this out, like this was, <laughs> I have to admit I was a bit stupid at first. Uh, in my first iteration I didn't really put much thought into it and thought why are these motors so noisy and why does it not work very well until I um, yeah, well, thought about this a little bit and it turns out that obviously even though the motor can handle quite a lot of power uh, the bearings cannot handle a lot of load in this direction. So there are actually two bearings now additionally. Uh, First is on the back plate and the one of one is on the front plate here and this one directly uh, holds together the sprocket the other one is still at the uh, uh, motor axle and the ABS is about a centimeter thick uh, and in total it works. Um, I could have made some stress analysis uh, because I designed this part in Fusion 360 but I thought well let's just keep, try it out and I tried it out for about 50 kilometers now doesn't it really show any signs of fatigue and I mean 50 kg is a lot but it's not 
insane and this part is really sturdy so I think it should hold up quite a while and even if it doesn't I can just reprint it again and uh, I mean this is about uh, 200 grams of plastic and I can buy it at uh, eight dollars or eight euros per kilogram so it's about uh, two euros <laughs> so it doesn't really matter that much um, yeah but there is more to this There is another extremely cool part in this build and that is the speed controller. This is a VESC, it's an open source speed controller. It's mounted within this also 3D printed frame and we added this gigantic cooling block here and uh, this controller here can actually now handle a lot more current than the motor does because of this gigantic cooler here, which is really awesome. And not even that, it, uh, the best thing about this controller is it's open source which means you can program it and guess what yes I've added two additional features to this controller and I will also show them in detail and um, well make them available for you in another separate video but just here I will explain to you what I've added and that is first of all a boost mode what does it mean well if you turn the throttle here, let me uh, lift the back wheel a little. Uh, well, obviously you can see the, the rear wheel turns, but unfortunately this motor here does not have a temperature sensor. Now the built-in so uh, um, firmware of this controller does have a throttle ramp down or a current ramp down when the motor overheats. Unfortunately, if you don't know how hot the motor is, you kind of have to be very conservative with your currents because you can otherwise uh, like burn your motor quite easily. Now, uh, most motors, or basically any motor, can handle quite a bit of overcurrent for a short period, amount, uh, period of time. This controller does not have a feature that allows for a short additional current. However, I added one and it basically tries to simulate the internal temperature of a motor with a very very simplified physics model and when the temperature is not above a certain threshold you can draw additional current which basically means that for about five to ten seconds you can actually set these uh, thresholds in the software um, you can actually set it to as much as you want but uh, that's the usual default you can draw for example, 30% more current, which gives you 30% better acceleration, but it will automatically throttle down this current after, let's say, 15 seconds. And um, so the question is, what does it do when you only um, like pull the throttle for two seconds or so? So that's why I have this internal temperature um, estimation. And it basically works like this depending on how much more than 100% throttle you are giving. So we are setting the absolute upper limit at let's say 130% and 100% is the current it can draw forever without overheating. Then if you go there's just slightly above this value, then if you will basically fill up a bucket of temperature, so in internal temperature value, and when it reaches a certain threshold, it just cuts the current off. And the faster or the more you are above the 100%, the faster it fills up this internal value. So it's a really simplified model, but you can change the parameters. And uh, so this way, it's basically if you only uh, do short current bursts, you will um, take quite a lot of time to fill up the bucket. But if you just uh, go up a, um, a steep hill, uh, it will ramp down the, uh, th the throttle after uh, yeah, a few seconds or depending on how long you set it and this avoids cooking the motor which is quite nice obviously after a few minutes um, this internal value will be empty again and then it will uh, yeah open the additional throttle again and yeah this all is adjustable and it's pretty cool another feature i added was a 
um, soft throttle cutoff that is depending on the battery voltage. So um, currently the motor, uh, the controller had only the ability to set up a soft RPM limit. So basically when you hit 50 kilometers an hour or this one goes about 55 by the way, I didn't mention it yet, but uh, the stats are also down in the description of course. Uh, so basically if you hit top speed and if you don't set this value, it sounds like hitting the RPM limiter on a uh, ordinary ICE engine. It's actually quite funny. It's like because you're overshooting over this um, speed threshold, then it completely cuts off the current. Then you fall back and it goes back in and it's, <laughs> it's a very weird cycle, like, like a rev limiter on a ICE car, as I said. Um, unfortunately, the soft RPM limit does well, soften this, but it is always at a fixed speed. Now, if you really want to draw the maximum power out of these batteries, which are in this box here, by the way, uh, then you probably know that the batteries do have more voltage when they are full than when they are empty. Which means that if you want to be able to use the full speed or the full power of the batteries when they are full, then this um, soft RPM limit would have to be at a different value than when the uh, bike is empty. Now instead of setting this at a um, fixed RPM I just have a soft duty cycle cutoff which basically means that it's a uh, soft cutting off at 95% or whatever percentage you want to set it of the maximum speed it can currently achieve because the duty cycle simply means how many percent or uh, how how much percent of time the m motor actually gets the sine wave so um, if it's what at 100 percent you basically get full power or it should be at full um, rpm and 100 percent means as fast as whatever the battery allows at this uh, point in time uh, and so you can always have this thro soft uh, throttle cutoff which is also depending on your um, battery voltage which is quite nice